We have a super chat by Stephen Likens. Shout Stephen Likens in the chat. Thank you so much for that $5 super. He says, Brian Branch is that kind of secondary player that can play both safety and cornerback. Thoughts? With the depth at cornerback, lines need to draft too. Stephen Likens, and we've seen a lot of Brian Branch drafted to the Detroit Lions at pick 18. He's one of the players that's trending upward, and we're seeing him a lot for the Detroit Lions. Hell, I just seen a mock draft where they had the Lions take Devin Witherspoon at 6 and turn around and get Brian Branch at 18 and completely fix the secondary in that sense. He is a player that can play both, and we do have a need for a player like that. Would I be upset if they went Brian Branch? No, because we need help at secondary. I'm just not 100% sure because I don't know Tracy Walker right now. We don't know what's going to go on. Are they going to bring back Deshaun Elliott? And we know Kirby Joseph is is a stud. We so we got to wait till really after free agency, Stephen. Like, because I think for all of all of this draft talk, we'll have a really good understanding what's going to happen with the Lions after the free agency period, at least the first two weeks of it, and say, okay, now we have a grasp of what the Detroit Lions really need. Okay, so they didn't feel. The Deshaun Elliott hole. They didn't re-sign a Mike Hughes. They did not bring back a Mania Warrior. Now we know damn well that they're probably going to get a cornerback and potentially a safety in the draft. It's potential for sure. So I look, if they went that route, I'm not going to be upset. I'm I'm not. And I am tired of the secondary getting exploited. I think we all are. I think we're absolutely freaking fed up with the, the secondary getting demolished. And I don't care if Jeffrey Akuda is not playing well. He doesn't deserve to be the starter just to be the starter, right? You've got to earn your reps. So if that means you got to potentially draft a successor, then then do it. You know, then do it. We got finally catching your live stream since the season. And how is my second favorite Detroit GM doing? I'm doing good. I actually just got out of rehab right before I went live here. And I tell you what, my back, is it's sore. It's sore as a mug, but sore is good. Pain is not. And I'm sitting upright hard. I'm trying to get better stance. And uh, it's, it's taking one day at a time right now. Rehab, do we wait to see who homes pick up in free agency to rethink our picks? Yes, Weston Lyon, I, I agree. That that is the case. With that said, I still do believe Brad Holmes is a BPA. Like, if a player falls, even though we're we're good at edge, and say Miles Murphy falls, even though we're good at edge, I do believe they'll probably pick him up. But say we Monty's gone, we don't bring back Mike Hughes. There's a massive hole at the cornerback position. The assumption will be you're gonna have to take one with the one within the first two picks, most definitely, and potentially double up. So yes, a hundred percent. And where are we going to put? Where are we going to put our finances towards free agency? You know, are we going to put how I figure out how the lines draft? And I, I've talked to people behind the scenes, and because they ask me, how do you get these damn picks right? I go through the salary cap from each position for the last three years. So I look at the position of defensive tackle and cornerback safety. I go back three years. How much money do they allocate to each position? That's a good way to find out how they're going to potentially draft. Because if how I figured out they're going to do with with DeAndre Swift and Jeffrey Akuda is they had $9 million allocated to the corner position two years prior before, but had $9 million less that year. What does that mean? Well, you're sitting at pick three. You're probably going to invest that money into the corner. So when free agency is over, about two weeks, I promise you I will go through all the cap, all the players. I'll see where all the allocation of funds are at, where I see a net increase. That's a probably a less likelihood that you're going to draft that position early on. If I see a decrease at said position like the cornerback position, there's a good chance that that potentially is going to be your pick at six for sure and, and potentially linebacker. But we, I will definitely do that for you. 
and it will... It, 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 I know it's a boring video. No one wants to talk about finances, but it's also a good way to really understand or give a clue to what they're going to do. Brad Holmes is very good at his draft and evaluating talent, and I do think his BPA. So that does throw a curve in there, a good curve, because you don't want to know exactly what a GM's going to do, but it does give you an indication there. We have Don Burr, the absolute GOAT, in the building right now. Shout out to Don Burr. He reps Detroit Lions to all the other channels, especially the Bears channel from Chat Sports. I absolutely love it because they give me hell for it. I, hey, that's my G right there. You don't mess with Don the Goat. We got Jim Peterson here. Says, hashtag much. Do you think Captain Jack Campbell would be a good fit in a Honolulu Blue? Jim Peterson, I think Jack Campbell would be an absolute perfect fit for the Detroit Lions. He would be... The ideal player you can get in the second round, he would fit immediately and start immediately. He's got the size, speed, he's good in coverage and can stop the run, physical and intelligent. I love Jack Campbell. I think he would be absolutely perfect. And in my perfect offseason scenario, I would have I have the Detroit Lions drafting Jack Campbell. That is my perfect offseason scenario for the linebacker position. I think he'll fit in like a glove. And not the O.J. Simpson glove at the trial, but a legit glove, it would fit. Hand, glove, perfect. That's the guy who I would like. Let's see, Roquan Smith would have been awesome to get. That would have been huge. Yeah, you got a massive deal, $100 million over there. I love Roquan Smith, and I wish that we had a shot to get him, but there would have been no damn way we're going to pay $100 million to Roquan Smith. That's just a ton of money. And I love Roquan Smith. You've taught, you've heard me talk about him endlessly on this channel. I want Lions trade for him before the trade deadline, even though it's going to happen because it's the Chicago Bears, and they're not going to trade within the division as they should not. But that's how much he's a value asset to a defense. He's damn good. Again, if I miss your question, please just repost it. I'm not being a dick. I'm not doing it on purpose. Mike or Mike, I would love for the Lions to trade down and not only get an extra second-round pick, but I get a fourth-round pick somehow as well. Steven Likings, I would love to get a fourth-round pick. You look at the fourth-round picks that the Detroit Lions have got under Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes, he knows how to draft. They know how to draft. I'd love to get a fourth-round pick. And if you do trade out of six and say you go to nine, Potentially, you could get a second and a fourth-round pick. And I love the fourth-round picks. I know a lot of people talk first, second, and third. But where you find value on a football team is fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh round. Even undrafted. Amon Ross St. Brown, fourth round. James Houston, I believe he was a sixth-round pick. Jerry Jacobs, undrafted. These are the pieces to this football team that makes us a football team. We've not experienced this in Detroit since a long time. I talked to my good friend Herman Moore, a legendary wide receiver, and I explained to him, we've I've never seen this. The, you know, we've always got players that were fantastic, right? Like you get the Herman Moore, you get the Calvin Johnson, Barry Sanders, a Matthew Stafford, an Indomitian Sue. But where is the players you get in the mid to late rounds? That's how your team is developed. You can do good in the first and second, but you got to be a team able to find those mid to late round gems. And we have done that, and this is different. And I think this is why our rebuild has been phenomenal, and it's been faster than even I expected, is because Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell identified players, and I'm putting Dan Campbell in there with him because they're both on the same page, and it's that's how you win. That's how you get the players you want, is when your leadership is on the exact same page about the same player. We heard rumors coming out of the Akuta draft that Derek Barnes was wanted by Pat Matricia, and Bob Quinn wanted Jeffrey Akuta. That's where you result in a failure. You don't have leadership on the same page. If you don't have that, it's going to be a failed operation. And uh, we're seeing right now these two... They are on the mark, and we got to give love to the scouts. The Detroit Lions scouts done a phenomenal job finding players like Jackson State over there with James Houston. So this is the big part of the draft, and this is why, first off, we got 
Raw Podcast in here who's phenomenal with draft prospects. you got to subscribe to his channel. This is where you really build your football team is these parts of the draft. Alex Haggerty says, Hashtag Mike, we know that Brad Holmes does something no one expects. What is more likely to you, draft a position no one expects, trades up, or trades down? What is more likely? I think it's... Uh, ooh, I think... I, I'm going to throw a curveball. I know not a lot, of, a lot of people expect this, but it would not shock me that they trade up. Why? Because they did it with Jamison Williams and they thought about doing it with Panay Sewell. So potentially they want to trade up into the first round if they, get in a, if they think there's a player and you have three first-round picks or if they really are infatuated with Jalen Carter. We don't know. I don't have any information on that. Maybe they go up a couple spots. Now, personally, I would like to trade back. That is my, you know, personal preference there is trade back, acquire more draft capital. But I think that would shock people if you actually moved up a little bit. I think that would shock people for sure. If Carter falls, he don't move. I tell you what, if Carter fell to six, I would be so happy. I would be so happy, I would nearly tear up because he's such a dominant player. And for someone who is on my board as rank one to fall to you at six and who can change this defense from butt cheeks defense to a damn good one would be amazing because I know what he brings. This guy is phenomenal. He is, the, he is one of the best players I've seen in the draft probably the last 10 years. He does remind me of a player that's transcendent. A transcendent player like an Indomitian Sue or an Aaron Donald that's just so damn good, they immediately spark greatness. And it's hard to find players like that. So if he is there, I think you run up with the card. I think, yeah, Stephen, like, I think you run up the card. Yeah, I know they got bad at Brad Holmes, but uh, if Jalen Carter, if they pull Jalen Carter at six, the lines are on the clock, I want to be them off the clock in one second. Like, Boom, I'm calling Jalen Carter up. You're getting selected. That is it. 